wore this shirt out in public today, so just to let you know how I'm doing like mentally. Let's finish this centaur. There is a part one and a part two to this series where I make an articulated centaur skeleton. And then I give it lights and I give it fur and it can walk. Now I gotta make the rest of the costume. I only have the centaur, but she's not done yet. Not even close. And I have to make it in time to submit to the League of Legends LCS cosplay contest. So in this video, I am making a shirt. I am making bracers. I am making pauldrons, pants, a glowing helmet and a glowing scythe. I hope you are ready for some delicious, delicious ASMR of cling wrap around my body. <laughs> How's it look? I kind of really wish I had done this once my spouse had gotten home because I have to draw patterns on my back now. I can't even tell if I even went far enough over. Did I? Oh shoot. I drew out a rough pattern for the base of this torso shirt thing, but only doing the light gray and navy blue sections and certainly struggling to see the backside. Okay, I think I've drawn on my pattern. It's a little rough as you can tell in some spots in the back is especially not great because I can't see what I'm doing. And it goes all the way down there. I think I got all the pieces that I want drawn out. So now I have to cut it off my body, which I can do right over here. And turn it into a mock-up. Mock-ups are something I rarely do because I am so lazy, even though I know it will save me time and effort in the long run. But since this is a competition cosplay, I want to get the fit right. And it's a good thing I did a mock-up because this first try uh, didn't go so well. It is the next day and I re-sewn this arm and it looks way better than yesterday. I don't have like that weird like puff bunch there. So it really was just sewn in the wrong spot. My fault. The other thing I noticed is that it is still a little bit loose right here. So I'm probably going to make sure that I sew this a little bit more in. But otherwise, this pattern is actually working out. And I think having this as the zipper to get it on and off will work. Cause I also need to remember that in the end, this the fabric that I'm using is actually quite stretchy. It's four way stretch. So once I make the, the final version, I might still need to make quite a bit of adjustments. But even being a sewing novice, I am pretty happy with how this mock-up has turned out. Good job, me. <laughs> oh, all this power mesh, and I'm only using this much of it. Probably for the best though, I am gonna mess this up. Ooh. So I am back to dyeing fabrics, but this time instead of doing an ombre from yellow to red, I'm just dyeing this white power mesh to be that light gray color of Lilia's skin. Um, this should be a lot easier than the gradient dye because I'm just gonna basically throw it into a pot. And because it's not fur, it's this super thin fabric, it should also be a lot quicker. I did pick up two colors for this, a charcoal gray and a royal purple. I'm heating up the water now and we'll see how it turns out. Even though this was much easier than dyeing the fur, it did still take me a couple of tries to get the right shade of light gray. So here are all of my dyed pieces for the torso and for the pants. Now knowing my pattern fits, thanks to that mock-up, I got to cut out the new navy blue me, 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 the navy blue minky fabric. So I've got all of the pieces cut out for Lilia's shirt, torso piece thing, and I'm ready to sew them together. But there's this texture on Lilia's shirt, this line texture, and I really struggled with what I was gonna do to make that texture. I took some scrap pieces of fabric and I started doing some tests for how I was gonna make that line. First thing I tried was just a plain old straight stitch, 
But the problem with this is that if you sew a straight stitch on a stretchy fabric, it will no longer be stretchy. So it kind of like ruins the functionality of the fabric. Then I tried just a regular ballpoint pen, which gives kind of irregular, hard to control line quality. And it smudges a little bit. So I tried Micron pens, which I believe are these ones, and they smudge a lot. So I tried these brush pens and there's a lot more control over like actually drawing the lines, but they still smudge a ton. And then the last thing I tried was a zigzag stitch, which doesn't look nearly as clean and nice as the straight stitch here, but it does keep the stretchy quality of this fabric. But I did get a suggestion from someone in the LCS Discord to try and shave the fabric because it's basically fur. So I'm gonna try that real quick and see if I like it any better. I have basically my little dog fur trimmer. It's just wireless, it's awesome. And another scrap piece of fabric and I'm just gonna try to shave the lines, I guess. I mean, it works. I'm gonna practice with this thing, I think, and see if I can get any better at making those lines. That works like absurdly well. I kind of love it. This might be what I do. Biggest downside is that this has a huge margin of error. Like, if I mess up, I kind of have to restart the whole piece. Ah, <sighs> okay. Okay, game plan. Here is one sleeve with the finished shaved texture. It's pretty subtle, but I think I like it. I did mess up a couple spots, but I also have to remember that a lot of this is gonna get covered in that uh, foam armor. I'm, I'm so happy with that. It turned out so good. Hey, Sharon, wanna hang out this weekend? Ah, oh, no, sorry, man. I gotta shave my centaur costume. <laughs> Okay, so here I'm cutting notches into these pattern pieces so it's easy to fit them together. Round edges like this can be a real hassle to sew. And now, I have my first try-on! I'm actually pretty happy with how it's fitting so far. This power mesh is harder to work with than I thought it would be. It's extremely slippery. Should have seen that coming, but... <laughs> I'm learning. Can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop rubbing it. It is nice. I'm excited to get the gold onto here because like this seam and this seam will be covered up. It's in the middle seam entirely is going to get covered up by the gold. So I'm excited to see it looking a lot more polished. I'm excited to hide these, which you can see because they'll get flipped under and top stitched. And I'm also excited to add these sleeves. I'm also going to be adding a gold trim to the to the wrist section. This is coming along smoother than I thought. <laughs> I'm uh, pretty stoked about this. The zipper took two tries, and I think I might take in this a little bit. It's a little bit loose in my armpit. But like, I kind of fucking nailed it. Oh well. Ooh. Damn, I had a good day. Okay, 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 okay. I spent almost two days straight making a lining for this top and hand sewing it in, and then I hated it, and I unstitched the entire thing. Instead of a lining, the final step to clean up this base layer was to top stitch down that extra fabric underneath. Then I got to start on the gold pieces that will be added on top of this shirt. I took my original pattern pieces out of the trash because I threw them away for some reason, and then I taped them back together to sketch out these shapes. These patterns got transferred to the high density EVA foam. In the reference, these gold bits have a lot of extra detail that I wanted to recreate with like a layered effect, which means more pattern making and more EVA foam. And then all layered on top of each other, they will make a cool 3D raised look. This breastplate area had the most intricate details and I really like how the design turned out.
quick test to see if I like the size and placement of these pieces before I add the gold on top. I'm gonna be covering all of my foam with fabric. This is a two-way stretch vinyl fabric and I've just done this little test piece here to see how it folds over and how the glue holds. The glue seems to be holding pretty well. It's definitely not perfect. I, if I put some pressure on here, I could, I could remove it. But it's definitely good enough that it will hold, especially since this is the backside and will get glued down to the shirt itself. And this is the tutorial that I'm following. Kimpasi does really good shit. But now I have to make patterns out of the fabric glue them to the tops and I'm going to like squish in these little details so you can see the raised bits. Make sure to wear a respirator anytime you work with contact cement. This stuff is toxic and it will delete your brain cells if you huff it too much. Once the fabric and foam were connected, it was easy to go from top to bottom and basically squeegee out all the air bubbles with my fingies and then press into those recessed details. The edges were notched to make them easier to fold over without creating wrinkles in the front and then glued down with more contact cement. Now I get to attach them permanently to the shirt. I had to be real careful with this step so that the contact cement I'm using doesn't show beyond the edge of the gold foam. Um, it could possibly end up looking really messy. So I'm making real tiny marks with a pen to know where the glue goes. I left the bottom of the shirt hem loose, knowing that I could just easily cut off the excess after that trim is glued down. And then I tried it on. Okay, uh, well, I finished, I would say 90% of this top. There are still some pretty big pieces missing and I forgot to make an entire section of gold plating on the back where the navy meets the sheer fabric. There's supposed to be another stripe of gold and I just, I just didn't make it. <laughs> and obviously there's a giant gem right here that's missing. That'll be later, because I simply do not feel like dealing with resin right now. And the other thing that's missing is drama. Basically, like shadows, like details in these ridges here. Because it's not enough just to make them look 3D, you also have to paint them so that they're just extra, just so extra. That's also gonna be done a lot later, probably when like most of the construction is done and I can do all the painting at once. And doing it all at once helps ensure that it looks unified. I don't know how I feel about this shape. And I don't know how I feel about this connection here. It does kind of look like there's a face on my tits. Okay. I'm like, I don't know, maybe like 80% proud of this. And 20% disappointed in myself. Because I suck at sewing. Sewing is my, my weakness in costume making. So having a whole functional shirt that I can get on and off my head without like busting a seam, having sheer sections, having like detailed pattern pieces. That's kind of cool that I did that. Didn't turn out perfect, but also it's not finished yet. So I might really, really like it once I add those shadows in that drama. I'm probably gonna make the bracers and the pauldrons next. Those will be easy since it's most of the same techniques covering foam and fabric, um, patterns I'm familiar with. <sighs> I can move in it, that's kind of nice. Hmm. Okay. I think it's time for a break. Three weeks later. So one of the things that I've mistakenly left for last is the gem that sits on the center of Lilia's chest, which I want to make out of resin. But resin does cure in like 24 hours and I am taking photos of this cosplay tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, oopsie. This resin was the absolute last thing I had to do for this build. Everything else was made already, but spoiler alert, it didn't work. <laughs> None of the molds I made were clean enough or the resin wouldn't cure or it'd be the wrong size. 
and since I had a photo shoot for this deadline, I just didn't make it. The final Lilia build just doesn't have a resin gem in the center. Um, even after finishing the shoot and submitting the cosplay to the contest, I never made the gem. I just didn't bother. Uh, so honestly, screw resin. <laughs> this is too hard. So I know I said I was like mostly done with this shirt, but I've decided that I don't like this piece anymore. It's not long enough. This is so awkward looking. I don't like that it ends so early. I want this point to go down to the bottom of the breastplate section. Um, Cause I also think it'll match the reference image more on top of just looking better in general. I also forgot to make the gold pieces that go back here. So, not as done with this as I thought. After a minor adjustment and some gold leather paint for drama, the shirt was finally, actually, finished! More of this paint job will be covered later in the video, but damn, does it make these designs look really good. Welcome to a different location in my home. It is a beautiful, cloudy, rainy day in Los Angeles. I can't even see the mountains back there at all. It's completely covered by clouds. It's cozy, I've got my tea, and I really want to be productive. Do I feel productive? Debatable. I want to sit out and enjoy like the drizzles in my tea, but like I also really feel like the crushing need to make stuff on Lilia. I'm actually gonna make something easy today. I'm gonna make her bracers. And I've made braces a million times before, so hopefully that won't be very hard. It's basically duct tape, pattern, foam, fabric, shave, more foam, more fabric, glue, done! Braces really shouldn't be hard. The only thing different that I'm doing is I'm covering the foam in that, like, minky fur, and I'm shaving those lines into it. But I've also done that before, so it really won't be that hard, right? I should get to work. Okay. All right, the sun's coming out, which means it's time for me to go back inside. You know the drill for this part. Let's make some bracers. So now that I got the base of these bracers done, I'm going to be cutting out the details from the pattern and cutting those out out of EVA foam and they're also going to get covered in um, fabric as well, like the other pieces, this nice gold fabric.
So here is the bracer with all the pieces put together. You can see I got the gold edges on the top and bottom that I wanted. And I added a lining. I don't actually think that you'll be able to see it when it's worn, but just in case, I added that. And the reason I made it red was to complement all of the like fiery red effects in the rest of Lilia's outfit. Really proud of that. I think it looks super cool. So I'm going to heat it up and then bend it into shape. And then all I have to do is glue the edges together right here in the middle. And I should still be able to get my hand through there nicely. Um, and I'm probably also going to reinforce um, this middle seam as well with another piece of foam. You know, just in case. I've broken bracers before. <laughs> I made a paper mock-up of Lilia's shoulder piece and it's not bad, it just might be a little bit too big. So I think I'm gonna cut it down, tape it back together and then see how that feels. But honestly the process of this pauldron is gonna be almost the exact same as the process of the bracer. So probably not gonna film a lot of it, it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Cut it out of foam, cover it in fabric, glue it together, bada bing bada boom, she's done. With only about a day's work, both the bracers and the pauldrons were finished. Man, I really love working on these easy pieces after struggling on something so tough. It helps give my confidence back. One more piece to finish off this torso area of the costume was Lilia's hands. Just because it's never a great idea to put body paint on your hands in cosplay, that's just a recipe for disaster. So instead, I took pre-made bridal gloves that came in white, and I dyed them gray um, with the rest of my power mesh fabric. To help make them look a little bit more realistic, I hot glued on some fake nails and added some shadows with soft pastels and a makeup brush. The reason I went for bridal gloves was because they don't have a seam on them. So when you're wearing them, it just looks like regular skin. Now let's move back to some furry leggies. I also just realized I need to work on the pattern for the pants, which are also gonna be in fur and also gonna have sections dyed. So I've got this pair of leggings that is old and I don't really wear anymore that I can cut up and turn into the pattern. And I have attached my shoe to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is use the top part the full legs is like the pattern, I'm gonna cut it up, but for the bottom shoe shape, I am gonna have to do the duct tape thing so that it fits correctly. And I'll essentially just be marking where the die section ends and then the navy fur begins, which will be this pattern. It's making sense in my head and I don't know if I'm explaining it well. <laughs> it's pretty useful just to be able to cut up an old article of clothing for <laughs> It's pretty useful to be able to cut up an article of old clothing for a pattern. It really helped my brain wrap around the shapes for these pants. I've sewn like bikini bottoms and shorts before, but pants seem really complicated for some reason. But once these pieces were cut out of the fur, I just attached the navy section to the gradient fur and put them together. What's nice about this gray insert piece on Lilia's pants is that I can just top stitch it down. It doesn't need to be like inserted all delicately because all of this right here is gonna be covered by one of those gold EVA foam pieces. And same thing with cutting this fur. I don't have to do it. I don't have to like make sure I don't cut through the fur because I think I'm gonna be shaving it down anyways to make the gluing of the gold piece on a lot easier. So I'm just gonna take this to the sewing machine and do it on the other leg. And then we're gonna try to put these two leg pieces together and hope it fits. <laughs> I did end up referencing a Sarah Spaceman video at least three different times while putting these pieces together. 
She explains how to sew pants really well. While they're not the most flattering pants I've ever worn, they do fit, which I'm so stoked about. These gray pieces on the side have kept that weird round shape and there really isn't any awkward bunching of the fabric, so I think they were a great success. Mr. Tumnus looking ass over here with her furry butt. Putting masking tape over these edges of the thigh shape, and this is to get the pattern for that gold trim that will be glued down later. and it will be made the same as all the other gold pieces, EVA foam wrapped in the vinyl fabric. And much like the back legs of the centaur body got lit up in the last video, these front feet are gonna have to match. These LEDs are soldered up in the same configuration as the back legs and then glued straight down to the hoof shoes with the wire that will be going all the way up my pants and connecting to a battery inside the cavity of the centaur body. So I was sitting here this morning thinking about finishing Lilia's front pants um, and how I'm going to be like stringing the shoe wires right all the way up my legs through the pants and then out the butt and how the pants are going to be connected to the shoes so I'll put them on all in one piece right like this furry end of the pants will be glued right down to the shoe I left a little gap here to put a zipper so I could zip up the shoe and then zip up the pants. And I think I'm going to scrap all of that because I don't think it will be very reasonable to have the pants and the shoes attached. I think I should be able to pull the shoes off and the pants will essentially slide over the top of them so it looks like they're all one piece, right? That's, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I think I'm gonna actually unstitch this from here and so the pants will just, slide on top of the shoe. Like these, this, this gradient fur will get glued right down to the shoe. And then I'll put the shoe on. Uh, well, no, no, wait. So, uh. <laughs> so these will be glued down to the shoe. I'll put these pants on that, that end right here at the fur. And then I can just kind of like smush them up my leg, put the shoe on, and then run this wire up my pants or maybe put a connector down there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know, this is hard. This ended up being a really good idea. Basically giving me a separate set of pants and shoes that would be much, much easier to get into and out of. Because this costume is extremely hard to wear. So any minor adjustments to give me some ease of movement was just in that invaluable. Look at that furry butt. <laughs> so this is what it's gonna look like when the feet and the pants are two different pieces. It will just slide over like that. The wire that's kind of just trailing here is actually gonna have a connector that will go up my leg, so I won't have to worry about it. And now all I gotta do is add that little gold piece to this section right here, and the front pants should be really close to being done. These gold pieces were easily glued directly onto the fur with hot glue, even though I certainly burned off the sensitivity in my fingertips at multiple times during this build. Pants a complete. Let's move on to something completely different. A giant oversized helmet with huge glowing horns. <laughs> I 
like it's really important to mention here that you probably shouldn't just cover your face in plastic wrap. Please be careful. Don't be that kid with their head stuck in like a grocery bag. <laughs> so I want you to like go to the middle and then Despite my warnings, it was a successful technique for getting a well-fitted pattern for the base of Lilia's helmet. Like with many other pieces in this build, the helmet is foam wrapped in fabric. The foam helps keep this piece sturdy and structured. And I like using fabric across the entire project so that everything is just super unified. Much easier than trying to find spray paint to match fabric swatches. And this way I'm certain that everything is the exact same shade and texture. And this fabric was super agreeable to contact cement, making it easy to assemble. And there is some extra foam and hot glue along the inside of the seams of this hat, just to be certain it wouldn't rip apart. And it fits. Of course, there needs to be a lot more detail, so I pattern out these gold lines with masking tape. And then they were attached to the hat with hot glue. They also had the added bonus of hiding the top seams of this helmet and just made it look a lot cleaner. And then those side seams are gonna be hidden by the giant horns. To match the texture on the shirt fabric and the reference, I did shave in more lines into this minky fur. Wow, making cosplay is just so elegant, so beautiful. <laughs> okay, but there was a point to that. I just needed the vague uh, size and shape of my head so I could properly sketch out the proportions for the giant horns. It would probably have been way more accurate to print out a life-size version of these horns just from the reference, but my printer isn't working and it's just faster to freehand sketch them. So you just gotta trust the process. Now that the size and shape looks right to me, I gotta actually pattern out the physical 3D horn shape. This is a big curved piece that could be difficult, so I wanted to try a new technique and make an aluminum foil sculpture of the horn that I could use as my base. I just piled on piece after piece of foil, holding it down with duct tape and laying it on top of my sketch to make sure it was following the right shape. Um, I was also making sure this horn was curving like slightly backwards and not going straight out of the side of my head to better match the reference. I 
I've never tried this technique before, but it worked great. I covered the piece in duct tape like I always do and managed to get a really accurate pattern. Since the very tips of these horns would be glowing with LEDs, I cut them out of plastizote foam, which is a type of foam that is semi-transparent and allows light to shine through. This foam was also used to diffuse some lights of the center body and is going to be used in her scythe too. Originally, I wanted to try to make these out of resin, but then I realized that the full helmet would be made way too heavy with resin, while this foam barely weighs anything. This is an extremely heavy costume, like all the way around, so any chance I can get to make it lighter, I should take. The base of these horns have some sort of like twisting layer on top, which was patterned with more cling wrap and more duct tape. And once again, they are covered in gold vinyl EVA foam. I went through so many sheets of EVA foam for this build, oh my God. gluing all these pieces together, I actually wanted to finish the paint job on the transparent glowing part of the horns. Um, just because I didn't want to risk doing a sloppy paint job and then accidentally ruining the gold fabric. Good morning. As of recording this, I think there are 10 days left until I have to submit Lilia. She does not have to be at 100% done. And I'm already at the point where I think I could even submit and still qualify, but I'm definitely not comfortable submitting right now. The helmet's not done and I haven't even started the scythe yet. Jeez, you're in there. Morning till night, crafting now. And I'm worried that burnout is getting to me, but I'm so fucking close. I'm so fucking close. I just gotta get this done. What is it? Can I help you? I'm busy right now, I'm sorry. He's mad that I've been crafting all morning instead of paying attention to him. Anyways, I'm moving on to more parts of the helmet. I'm hoping to get this helmet like 95% done today. Like LEDs soldered, almost all the pieces like complete and ready for assembly. And then like working on like the assembly and then the final like battery and like hardware pieces finished. Here are the pile of pieces that I've worked on, like things like this I didn't really record, or this, or this little face piece. Um, because it's all the same techniques I've already shown you. It's foam wrapped in fabric. Easy shit. The thing I'm starting on now is the ponytails. I have made another, like, uh, potato out of foil and duct tape. I'm gonna make a pattern out of this. Cut that out of the plastizote LED foam, which is the same thing these horns are made out of, because those ponytails are going to be glowing too. And I have a wig that I got a long time ago. Once I harvest wefts from this, I can cover this little potato um, with the wefts and it will glow. I also made the pattern for that ring that those are going to sit on. I'm not exactly sure what this shape is going to be yet. We'll see. I have an idea. I might do this technique again for that. I do have to make three more of these, sorry, two more of these, and I also realized that I should probably crimp the wig so it's fluffy and covers more area. I'm also going to be painting each of these yellow so that like the white doesn't shine through, which is a little bit more work than I was anticipating, but that's what I will do as soon as I get back from my break of getting boba. This wig was a very kind gift from one of my followers. Thank you so much. 
So this is a crimping iron and what it does is it adds texture to the wig hair. And then once you crimp it, you brush it out, you tease it again, and then you straighten it again with the crimper and the wig hair is much softer, much fluffier, and also much easier to manipulate. So it'll be easier for me to put this on the little foam piece. Just grab it chunk by chunk. I do it like vertically instead of horizontally. Horizontally? Horizontally. Um, and this will help hide the crimp marks better once it's like brushed out and teased. Just hold it, let it crimp. Then you get this nice, wibbly wobbly wavy texture. To be honest, I have been facing burnout as I reach the end of this project. And it's just sort of teaching me that I can't work on projects this big. Um, if it goes longer than like a month, I struggle to stay focused and motivated. I know there's only 10 days left and like I'm gonna finish it, but I can feel the burnout creeping up on me. Probably from crunching on two cosplays in a row. Not good for your brain. And this might sound a little cheesy, a little goofy, but the other day I got an Instagram DM from Jessica Negri, who is like my idol. She's like part of the reason I'm doing this in the first place. And she was hyping me up for the centaur and like giving me good vibes, telling me that she believes in me and all that. And it worked. <laughs> like, now when I'm feeling really unmotivated, I open up my Instagram DMs and I look at it. Like, it was only a couple days ago, but the, it has helped me, like, I think more than she knows. She's an inspiration for more reasons than one. Um, so if she's watching this, thank you. So here is what a crimped out, teased, um, fluffy strand looks like next to what it originally looked like here on the right. These wefts took ages to crimp and brush and section out into these pieces. But it's a good thing I took them from the entire wig because I did end up using every single piece. They were glued down in layers going from deep red to the orange to the yellow. And in order to keep these wefts together in a chunk without falling apart, I used Uhu glue. I spread it on the ends with a little silicone brush and just let them sit overnight. I also used the Uhu to brush down the west while they were attached in the ponytail. This way they stayed in their shape and I never had to deal with flyaways like on a regular wig. It's more like a hard shell than a proper wig, to be honest. finished all the strips of LEDs meant for the helmet, so some assembly on the helmet will begin today because I do have to do some gluing before I can do soldering it all together into the main board and the battery and yada yada yada. Last night I was having quite a lot of technical issues with the main center body and the electronics in there. Um, I think I fried a board, which is really... Um, Mm. which is really unfortunate because I now no longer have enough for the whole project. And by the time I order some more, they won't be here for submission. It's fine. Like I've said, I don't have to submit it 100%. The orb for the scythe simply won't have lights for the time being. But I am also just, in general, maybe freaking out a little bit that there are too many LEDs on the centaur in general. And even if I like lower the brightness or lower the output or whatever, it still, still won't work. But, um, figure that out later. For now, I'm gonna work on the helmet. I don't know if I've got time to do a lot of stuff I wanna do. Um, but I'm just gonna keep working. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs>
Wow, I sounded um, really defeated in, <laughs> in that last clip. And uh, probably because I was. The technical issues from these LEDs were really getting to me. I touched on it a little bit in the last video, but I can't even get into the full depth of the problems I ran into with just the lights, or I'd be making like another three hour video. It looked extremely cool in the final video, but I'm not sure if the emotional roller coaster of stress and the actual monetary cost was worth it in the end. With the horns mostly completed, it was time to attach them to the hat base. A little bit of hot glue later and they were on. Super lightweight and pretty darn symmetrical if I do say so myself. Okay, <laughs> so the helmet is probably 99% done. You can see the like LED wires like sticking out of here. The power booster I ordered isn't gonna get here till tomorrow and same with the extra batteries. And I also have to order an extra itsy bitsy. Um, so like it is like mostly constructed it's missing like one piece in the back that is going to hide some wires um and then obviously like it doesn't glow yet but i did get to assemble most of it and i'm super stoked with the proportions and how everything looks i did intentionally glue this on in the wrong spot it's supposed to be covering um lilia's eye but i really would like as much vision as possible um i'm probably not gonna have a lot of mobility and probably be very uncomfortable so adding a loss of vision to that doesn't seem smart I'm stoked that this is done I did have to order some paint so that I can paint all of the gold vinyl to be a little bit more dramatic it's kind of flat right now that'll get here in two days and then I'll probably be painting like all night to finish all the gold pieces sick at the difference the paint job makes for this piece. I'm so glad I decided to add this to all of the gold sections on my entire cosplay. And when the battery finally arrived for this helmet, I got to see her all lit up. All of this hard work looked really, really cool. But, of course, she is still not done. I left the biggest prop for last. Honestly, after all the complicated shapes I made out of foam in this costume, coming to this at the end felt like really easy. So I'm starting to work out the patterns and shapes for the scythe. I did trace some of these to be a lot cleaner. 
but I basically traced this big pattern onto a slightly cleaner piece of paper and I wrote down like what kind of foam it's gonna be cut out of. The shape that's still confusing me though is this handle part right down here. Um, it's gonna be like round, wrapped around the actual like PVC pipe, um, while these are gonna be mostly flat with some beveled edges, which I can, I can kind of like work out in my brain, but this piece I'm like struggling to think about like how to pattern it. Um, so I think I'm going to do the same technique I did with the horns and just make an aluminum sculpture and then like make it hollow so I can slide the PVC pipe into it and make sure I like the size and stuff and then make the pattern based on that. Right now my going plan is also to hide the battery and brain and all that for the LEDs into this little section here. I'm also really struggling today. I had a hard time like waking up and doing anything. I'm trying, I'm still trying to film reaching the end here, but with only like nine days left and I still have to build this whole thing and still have to do some soldering, like even the centaur is not done yet. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm struggling to remember filming because it just takes so much longer to set up the camera and remember to record and like be in frame rather than just go, 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 craft, craft, craft. So if there's less footage of this, that's why. <laughs> Even the LEDs for this piece were a breeze, mostly because it's just one big long strip. So I didn't have to stress about all the soldering and the connections and the animation and yada yada yada. This strip is just glued to a big piece of flat plastizote foam and then shoved up inside the base of the scythe. So the lights are like pointing downwards towards that blade end and then they should show up super glowy and diffused. So the PVC pipe ended up being a little bit too thick to fit both this and this. So I ended up cutting it here. And what I think I'm gonna do is use more Warbla to make a much thinner rod all the way around. And it'll be smaller, but it'll still be pretty sturdy. And then that Warbla rod will also have this attached to it. Um, so that when I make this orb, it's not too heavy in pulling this whole thing down. Much like the previous glowing horns, I painted the glowing part of this scythe before adding any of the foam bits. And then after the paint job was done, it was just a matter of laying these pieces up to build up those shapes. The pommel of this scythe was patterned with the same aluminum foil method and the foam covered in fabric to match the rest of the build. I really love the added texture that this fabric gives. Now with all the EVA foam and the spikes and the paint on this scythe complete, I got to plug in the LEDs and give her a test. Look at that awesome glow. But the scythe is still missing her big spiky glowing bowling ball. So on the camera, it kind of looks okay, but in real life, it, it looks like shit. 
Um, especially if it lights behind it. It is so streaky and ugly. Ugh. <laughs> so I do have a backup one of these, luckily. Um, what I'm gonna do is make a pattern and put plastizote on the inside in like that orb shape. So I'm like gonna make a smaller orb and just smoosh it in there and that will be painted and it won't be streaky because it won't be on glass. And it'll still like, um, it'll still glow nicely. But yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> bummed I spent like an hour painting that and it looks like garbage. <laughs> oh well. For some reason, I don't have any footage of completing the rest of this spiky glowing bowling ball. Um, so here she is. Honestly, you know what I'm gonna say for this though. It's EVA foam covered in gold vinyl. The only difference is I did end up ad adding foam clay to some of these edges here that were glued together so you really couldn't see the seam. And then that just got hidden when I painted the whole thing. And I like, can't even really tell you about how I made some of the patterns for this thing because I just eyeballed it. <laughs> the chains do have like a thin layer of warbler in them to help keep them sturdy. And so that the weight of this orb with all the lights in it doesn't like pull down the foam and like warp the shape because like this can like bend. And so I didn't want this to like make the scythe look like it had a big seam in it or it was bending. I actually submitted my cosplay to the contest before even beginning construction on this orb, which you can see in this video right here. This was the video that I used for my submission, but right after getting out of this outfit, I immediately went to start crafting this. I think the only reason I didn't have it done was because I was waiting for more foam to arrive because I had used all of my EVA foam. The finished scythe just has the PVC pipe um, put directly into the pommel and there is a little extra wiggle room inside to also hold the battery pack for the LEDs. With the construction finally complete, I could move on to the finishing touches to really bring this cosplay from looking pretty good to looking really fucking epic. Namely, more of that dramatic gold paint job. Every single piece of gold on this cosplay got this same paint applied and I attempted to match the reference as close as possible. I think this paint elevates the look of the entire cosplay so, so much. Okay, so I did paint these gold pieces on the entire cosplay and I really like the dimension it gives. Um, but I think I need to paint more because this gradient uh, kind of looks like shit. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand paint it with this and then brush it out with the comb and hopefully it will look a little bit closer to the reference. By the way, it's currently Monday and I think I'm gonna be taking pictures on Wednesday, which means I have two and a half days to finish this as much as I can and then submit on Friday. <gasps> All four of Lilia's ankles got this gradient paint added on top of the dyed fur. And it's just another extra detail I'm really glad I added. The bright red paint is so much more vibrant and accurate to our model. So 
there's a couple of important little adjustments I need to make and these are going to be really easy. Um, the pants do kind of slide down my little butt so I want to make an attachment here to the pants and an attachment here right at the coochie and I think that'll help keep them all in place so that my skin doesn't show. Um, I haven't attached the lights here and there is some gapping which I'll try to figure out. I'll see what I can do. But this is my first, like, test of the pants and the shirt together. I'm, like, pretty stoked about it. And now, now, finally, after a long few months of nonstop crafting, Lilia is finished. So, what about the cosplay contest I submitted her to? I mentioned it in the first video, but a few years ago I actually placed as a finalist in this same contest. And it was such an honor. So much fun. And everyone who competes in this contest is so nice, so sweet, and so helpful. I made great friends through the League of Legends LCS cosplay contest. That is a fucking mouthful. <laughs> Riot did change the way finalists were accepted this year. In previous years, it was just like the top five or the top 10 cosplays, like, period. There was no categories or like skill levels. And so this year they added five categories. They were armor, sewing, duos, special effects, and larger than life. And I entered Lilia into the larger than life category. So I did submit her at about 90% done and then during the waiting period of knowing whether or not you make it as a finalist, I ended up finishing her and having my final video shoot, which I've been showing off through the video. A lot of us who submitted to the contest were all hanging out in the same Discord group together and just rooting for each other and hyping each other up and showing off our finished costumes and like being like, oh, I'm so proud of you. You did such a good fucking job. Hell yeah. Um, it was a really good time. Despite the insane amount of anxiety shits I was having, I was still having a good time being able to communicate with these other cosplayers because we were all in the same boat. And to be honest, I was not aiming to win this contest. I wasn't aiming for second or third. I was aiming to be a finalist because I wanted to be able to hang out with more of these cosplayers in person again. And it's just such a fun time. Um, winning it wasn't on the table for me. And I knew that from the beginning, but being a finalist would be pretty cool again. I did have this inkling this just awful little feeling in the back of my head that I just didn't place. And I talked to about it with like my spouse and my other cosplay friends and they all said, no, 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 no way. You placed, like absolutely not. But I was right. A week passed and the finalists were announced and I did not make it. Another cosplayer had beat me in the larger than life category so I was not chosen as one of the top five finalists. Obviously, I was pretty devastated. I did cry about it. Months of hard work, probably more than $2,000 of cosplay materials, and I didn't place as a finalist. Probably my best cosplay work yet, and it still wasn't good enough. But that's the thing about cosplay contests, is it's not always about what you do, it's about who else shows up. Like, the other contestants made some really, really good cosplays. I'm especially proud of my friends Kikia and Cobalt, who placed as finalists with a Pike and Illusion cosplay. And Cobalt ended up winning first place in the entire contest. They kick so much ass. All of the five finalists their cosplays are up and their socials are up here as well, so I do encourage you to check them out and hype up their builds. To an outsider who doesn't see the craftsmanship of these builds, might see a cosplay that to them looks simpler or smaller and just assume it doesn't deserve to place, which is incorrect. <laughs> but that's just not how these contests work. It often comes down to 
the smallest details, right? The different level of complex techniques that were learned and in the end, just how clean your build ended up being. The thing that actually bums me out more than like not winning, even more than spending all this time and money on the cosplay, is just that I'm likely never gonna wear her again. <laughs> this build is, Lilia is just so uncomfortable and unwieldy and large and still filled with technical issues. I'm not gonna be able to fly with her anywhere. She's just so cumbersome. And I had an allergic reaction to the makeup. That sucked. Um, anyways, I did learn how to build a centaur. I learned that I don't really like working with LEDs and that I don't really like working with fur. So at least I'll be able to plan better for future costumes. And I got to put together this big set of videos and maybe you'll learn something. Maybe someone out there will make a much better centaur cosplay and I'll have helped them with their build because they learned what not to do. <laughs> Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I'd be pretty hype about that. If you make a centaur um, after watching my videos, I'm begging you to tag me in it. I wanna see your centaurs. Speaking of my next builds, I have more crafting videos coming. I recorded the entire process of making this Miku cosplay, so that is a video that will be coming soon. And then I also made a video explaining how I made my Astarian wig from Baldur's Gate, and that's gonna be another video. Plus, these are my next big planned projects, and they will also be made into videos. More Baldur's Gate, because I am absolutely obsessed with this game and a Critical Role cosplay because I love Critical Role. <laughs> and I got invited to join a little Campaign 2 group. So I'm excited to cosplay with a bunch of other people. Please stick around to see me conquer these costumes as well. Give me suggestions on how I can make better crafting videos or maybe different cosplay ideas that you have. I'll take those too. You can find me on socials where you can see more of my cosplay or maybe just my boops. And, uh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> the way she creaks. Could you stop? <laughs>